All right, well, now when it comes to beaver trapping, there's four primary trap types that all have their time and their place in, in the beaver trapping field. The first one we'll talk about here is what's known as the long spring leg hole. Uh, this particular trap is a size number three, and this was the old standard when it came to beaver trapping. Um, we moved on a little bit away from these, but there are still many trappers in the state and throughout the country that still like these uh, for, for trapping uh, beavers in particular. Um, I'm not so much in favor for them because um, a brand new long spring takes quite a, quite a good deal of effort to set. Um, I'm not able to step and com compress these springs uh, on my own, so I've actually got to carry a setter uh, much like this one in the field. Um, it adds more bulk, it adds more weight, um, and I would just rather be able to set them a, a little bit quicker on the go, but here we'll give an example on how to set a long spring with this uh, setter. It's simply take the, the springs on each side here and set them in between the teeth that are on the top and bottom jaws of this setter with the uh, leg hole jaws on the outside of the trap setter. Simply step down and it will compress your springs. On this trap, you have two flexible jaws here. Uh, the one we're really focused on when setting this long spring is the one that leads towards the trigger, otherwise known as the dog. You'll simply press this jaw down, place the dog over that jaw, and lift up on the pan. I do not release this pan, keep pressure underneath of it, and get your hands out of the way to where you will not end up caught in this long spring trap. While holding up on the pan, release tension off of the setter, come back, open the setter, and carefully remove your long spring. Now this trap still is not in an effective way to catch any animal of any type because of this jaw that's still in place. With your finger on the back side of the jaw, again, so you do not get caught, should the trap miss, uh, f fire accidentally, lower this jaw. Sometimes you've got to move and flex your long springs around, move this jaw down to the back. We can adjust the tension on this pan because the animal will essentially have to step onto this pan to fire the trap. Slowly lower the pan down until it's set at the appropriate tension and level to where with the least bit of pressure this animal when stepping on this pan will make the trap fire. And we can set the trap off safely and carefully by, by again going underneath the jaws and simply applying pressure to that pan. All right, next up from the long spring is what we like to refer to as the coil spring leg hole trap. Um, this is sort of the next evolution up from the long spring. A little bit more technology involved in this trap and a whole lot easier to set for these. Um, I personally don't require setters for these. I can set these on my own uh, without another piece of equipment, but they do make setters that will go off and extend these arms on each side to where they can be compressed very easily by hand. Uh, otherwise, you will have to set them using your feet. Um, a little bit of difference in these two traps um, that's important to note is this is a, a particularly large uh, coil spring, probably larger than what most folks are used to seeing. I like to use a large, and this is a number five, a large coil spring uh, for beavers. They have particularly large back feet especially. Their front feet are still pretty small, but for those folks that like to do a rear foot uh, beaver catch, you're going to have to have a large trap with a large jaw, uh, jaw, jaw length and a good bit of space in here to hold that beaver high up on his ankle and create the least pain possible. Um, and be the most effective as possible. Here's the coil spring, and I'll back up a little bit here too. This is a spring, that, this is a coil spring trap that has four springs on it. There's a lot of holding power here. It's a very fast trap, very effective. We'll move on here to, this is just a little two, two coil uh, uh, spring trap, and this is a one and three quarter trap. This is a lot smaller. It's a lot more effective for say raccoons, coyotes, fox, and things like that. This really has no place in the beaver swamp or in the beaver pond. Um, it's simply too small to be effective and, and, and ethical for, for beaver trapping. Um, so we'll back up here and we'll go ahead and set this number five coil spring trap. With these, I simply take a, a grip on the jaws here, put one foot on the left lever, compress it, lift up, put my other foot on the right lever, compress it, and right now there's no longer tension on these on these catch arms. We'll again flip our trigger and our dog back with, by holding the lever closest to the dog. We'll push it down, lift the dog up, and all the time our fingers are clear of the jaws. And my other hand is working underneath this other catch jaw. I now compress this dog just slightly and lift the pan high up and over the dog. 
it's now taking pressure off that far catch jaw. Now since we have the dog securely in place, pan is up high, take your rear jaw, set it all the way back, and again we can come down and adjust our pan pressure. And now as that beaver would step on that pan with either his front or his rear foot, he can be caught. And again we can set it off by reaching underneath this back jaw and compressing the pan. Okay, so when it comes to leg holds, whether it be a long spring or a coil spring trap, I really don't recommend that they be set on land to where the beaver has to be trapped and waited until you get there in the morning to dispatch him. I'd much rather see the leg holds set on what we call a drowning cable or a drown slide set. Um, and it goes a little bit like this. We'll take the same four, four coil spring that we talked about earlier and we'll dissect it a little bit here. And here's where the quick links come in that we talked about earlier for the necessities of a trapping bucket. This quick link is attached and linked through our crunch proof swivels and we've got a swivel at the base of this leg hold and at the end of the leg hold. This helps to where that beaver when caught can swivel and turn easily without being caught up, twisting an ankle or breaking skin and making it as painful, painless and uh, ethical as possible. So what we'll do is we'll open up our quick link and on this cable we have what's known as a drowning lock. On that drowning lock there is an opening to where this quick link can be attached. Simply slide your quick link through that cable and always be sure to lock back that quick link all the way to the end as tight as possible. It's not a bad idea to take a wrench and get another good half twist on there to make sure that quick link does not come, come open. So when this leg hold is on this drowned cable, it's embedded and set and ready for a beaver to step in it near the shoreline where the beaver would come up to exit the, to exit the water body. That beaver will step in this trap, it will close on, his, on whether it be his front or his rear leg, and their natural instinct is to come back the way they came and to dive to deep water. So what will happen, you've got a loop here, it will be staked in the shoreline. Beaver's caught, he will dive freely, and that lock will allow him to slide all the way to the bottom of this drown cable. And you can see just how easy it can go this way. And he'll come down here and hit our anchor. This anchor has got to be set three feet deep in the water to be deep enough to drown a beaver, especially a large beaver. Once this beaver has hit this anchor, he is stopped. He cannot come back up the line. This is where the locking cable, or that drown lock, comes in. It cannot slide back up the cable. That beaver is forced to remain down here until he expires. A little bit on the anchor for this cable, this drowning cable set. Um, it's got to be 30 pounds. A beaver, especially a large adult, can easily drag uh, an anchor that's less than 30 pounds back to shore. And again, he'll be waiting um, up, up shore on, on morning with the anchor at his feet. A little bit on the anchor, there's another loop at the end of this drowning slide, much like where you would have had to stake it in on shore. This is where our 14 or 11 gauge wire comes in and a good bit of lineman pliers. Just be sure to wrap it around whatever your anchor would be, whether it be a few sandbags, um, 30 pounds of cinder like, like I've got here, whatever it may be, make sure it's 30 pounds and three foot deep and you'll have an effective drown slide beaver catch. Here we have a good example of where the beavers are using the pond and continually coming out right here and kind of doing what I refer to as a, as a crossover. And what they're doing is they're continually using the same path, venturing up into the wood line behind us and foraging, cutting limbs, um, whatever they can find, whatever they like, and dragging them back into the pond. And they're using this. This is very heavily used, although there's, there's these paths all up and down this edge of the pond. This is by far the most heavily used one. You can see they've got it really muddied up and, and really run down to dirt where their bellies are dragging as they're leaving the water. Um, this is also a really similar sign to what you see what they would call a dam crossover where a beaver is going from one pond to another. Real similar looking sign. Um, great spot to, to, to do a trap site. Um, really high percentage area. They're using this area a lot just for as muddy as, muddy as it is. Alright, so for this set we're going to use a drown set with this number five four coil leg hold. Um, the drown set's going to go good right here because as you'll see it's a really inconspicuous set. It's really going to be hidden away from the beaver because otherwise if we try to put a kind of bear or a snare here, it'd be a very difficult trap to hide and there's a, there's a fine chance that the beavers would just stop using this, this area. 
So with the drown set, um, the most important thing is to make sure that you've got three feet of water um, uh, to access to drown that beaver. So this, uh, this anchor has to be able to get the three feet of water by the length of whatever your cable is. These cables come in a lot of different lengths from 10 foot to 16 foot. You can, you can customize them for as long as you want. Um, try to try not to go a whole lot longer than you know 15, 20 foot or so because that's a long way for a beaver go to go to find the end of that anchor to be drowned. The shorter, the shorter that drown set is, the less chance you have of that beaver kinking up or not making it all the way to the bottom of the to where the anchor is located. So to start off with, I'm first going to just place my trap up approximately, you know, just to where I can watch it drag off the shore because what I want to do is walk my anchor out to three foot but not so far out um, to where I might risk um, uh, staking my cable in a, in a spot that's too short for me to access. So I'm at about about to my waist right here which is about three foot for me. Um, so right here is where I'm gonna approximately gonna leave my leave my anchor. Find the end of it here, here we go. And I'll just leave it dropped. So I know my anchor is going to be here in about three, three and a half foot, and I'm going to walk my cable back to the shore. And I'm doing this to kind of pinpoint my staking location. You've got to be sure to stake the other end of your drown set. This is what I'm trying to estimate right now. So I know I've got to be staked. I, I did it just about perfect, just on the inside of this ledge here. Um, being that this ground is so hard right here, this 30 inch stake is not going to work for me this time. And I'm going to be able to get by with my shorter, um, well, that's probably about a, a 15 to 18 inch uh, land stake. And this bottom is really rocky here. So once you get that stake in, it's sure enough gonna hold. As I staked that, I staked it at kind of an angle to where that beaver has to pull back on that entire stake to get any leverage. He can't just simply pull it straight out of the bank. Stake at an angle to where you have a lot more holding power with that stake. All right, so now that we've got our cable set in, it's time to set the four coil trap. Um, sometimes you can set them down here um, next to the pond. This is just a little bit too slanted. Um, it's going to be a difficult spot to set the trap in. So it's best off that I go ahead, and this is one advantage of the coil link or the um, quick links, you can go ahead and detach your trap from that cable slide and take it up to higher ground for safer setting. Okay, so now that we're up on level ground, just up from the from where the slide is exiting the pond, we'll go ahead and quickly set our our leg hold here. And I like to keep the pan up extremely high like that. That's not where you're going to want to be to set it. You know, once you leave the trap site, but it's going to keep it from going off accidentally by the time I get it attached back to my cable like I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now that we're back down at the stake site, we can go ahead and attach back our quick link here. And even though these gloves look bulky, they're still good for doing little tasks like this. You'd be surprised at what you're able to do with these gauntlet gloves on. So once that quick link is back securely attached, we're getting ready to set our trap here. Now this is not a leg hold you want sitting up here to where the beaver can see it. That's obviously going to be a problem. And usually at a pond side, you're not going to be able to conceal it in like you would on a coyote or a fox or a raccoon set. So what we'll do is pull our cable tight here have a look at bringing this cable slide right to the water's edge and the trap to the water's edge. I prefer my trap to be oriented to where when this beaver comes up and its front feet, this is going to be for a front foot catch, hits that pan and the dog flips and the trap gets disengages, there's no chance of that dog flipping the beaver's front foot, front foot out of that trapping area. So right now with this trap opens, that dog flips this way away from the beaver and away from his foot and his belly and everything else to where he can be caught in that trap effectively. If it's this way, there's a good chance it could flip his foot up and out, and this way it could flip his foot away. There's a good chance, and I'm gonna offset it a little bit here too, because if you can see, there's a lot of dry gravel right here, and the, the exit 
the exit run where the beaver's leaving the pond is kind of coming up at an angle. So I don't want to set it straight in line with the run here because they're not approaching from that way. They're approaching more from this way, kind of down from more where the dam area is below us here. And it doesn't take a whole lot to bed this trap down. What you'll do, and most ponds have that nice soft bottom near the edge where there's some silt and everything else, it's just a matter of doing a wiggling motion like this until that trap is good embedded and nice and firm. If there's a lot of slop in that trap when that beaver touches that pan, there's a good chance he'll come off that trap before it catches him. They do have pretty good reflexes, just like anything else that you would try to trap. So that's one, that's one tip for, for, for bedding that trap. And before I bed the trap, I go ahead and I lower that pan to where with just a little bit more of a touch on there, that trap will go off. Lower the jaw down and just slowly and carefully keeping track of where your handles are on that pan or on that, on that trap. Keeping your fingers away from the jaws because at this point that trap is quite sensitive. Just go ahead and bed that trap to where it's good and firm, just like that. The next step is find your cable. Pull it tight, as tight as you possibly can. That's a big trick to this whole operation is making sure that your anchor is as tight as possible. If that anchor is not tight, that beaver cannot slide all the way down to the bottom. That's a tight anchor. And just to be sure, I like to do a few hops on it, bed it into the bottom sediment to where that beaver can't pull that anchor back to shore. And there it is. Now you've got some cable exposed here. A beaver's not going to particularly like that. Uh, you'll always, almost always have pond mud available to come back and cover that cable back up. And it's worth taking the time to do. Um, although a beaver can't see all that great, and they might, they might well not be too upset by that, it's better than taking a chance. So I'm going to go ahead and just cover up that cable. Never hurts either to go ahead and brighten up that path a little bit that might have some eye field to where that beaver wants to come by and make a visit but that's your basic ground set now once this site goes ahead and settles down when you come back to check it the next day you'll either see the trap still sitting there knowing that a beaver hasn't visited the site or hasn't been trapped or that trap will be gone and more than likely there will be a beaver down towards the anchor all right and for sets like this where you don't so much have a bank den where they're coming in and out of or a, or a good solid run you know, in the water they're using, when, they're, when there's land runs like this, um, you can really increase the effectiveness and, and the eye appeal of the site too. If you go ahead and find some strip branches on site and place them up the hill a little bit, um, that might catch the eye of a beaver uh, coming through. Um, you can also increase the, increase the odds of catching a beaver too by applying a little bit of caster lure, a food lure, or something like that. This is a combination lure that actually incorporates both a, both a food curiosity scent and a caster scent. Um, and all you've got to do is just take your take a stick from the area and uh, swab it in your bottle. And you can just place it right up on the trail. And a beaver passing by downwind has a lot more likelihood of coming in and, and checking out that, that curiosity food lure or that caster scent to see who's in his territory and come up and have a better likelihood of you getting a catch on them.